um, well, I, I wanted to just briefly say, there's been a little uh, criticism of you and ARI recently. Oh my and God. I, I, no. I, I actually want to congratulate you because it just proves once again that I think you have made it. And it's jealousy, I think, for much less successful and more or, or and very irrational people. But I just want to thank you because you have touched hundreds of thousands. I, it's impossible to count a number of people, including myself. So don't be discouraged. Haters got to hate. And yep. uh, you're just an inspiration to many of us, including myself. And we thank you. So thank you. Thank uh, you, Jonathan. And, but you know, here's my real question, or one of my real questions. The other day, somebody asked you about uh, selfishness, and their question—I think it was a super chat—was, and you—you've heard this before. What's to keep me from just doing what, going off with a hot twenty-five-year-old at a bar? Yeah. And uh, Ben Shapiro asked you the same thing, exactly the same thing. Well, uh, I think this person was cribbing off of Ben Shapiro, but yes, it's a common common attitude. Why is that the go-to trope for selfishness specifically and not something like um, pick up a gambling problem, have a drug addiction, just steal? Um, why is that the go-to? And is that the go-to for women as well? When, you know, why don't we, do women say like, what's the key, you know, what's their version of that? Is it also, why don't I go off the hot guy at a bar and leave my family? And it's just, it's, it, it always strikes us. Why is that the go-to of selfishness specifically? Maybe the people asking the question are looking for advice <laughs> and tips. I, I mean, there's something cultural about it. So I don't think it's quite the same for women. I think it's, I think we have been in many respects since we're little um, inundated with images of what it means to be successful and what it means to be happy. And to be successful means to have uh, you know, beautiful house, a, a sports car, preferably a convertible, and, and a gorgeous woman by your side, a gorgeous young woman by your side. And if you think about James Bond, if you think about um, many of the, of the, of the images that, that have been projected to us of the essence of success, and of course, the playboy has always been deemed as you know, the, 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 something every man wants to be because we are driven by, by what? By testosterone, by, by sexual urges, and men are supposed to be driven by that much more than women, although I'm not sure that's true, but, but it, it, that's, the, that's the stereotype. That's what people think in terms of it. So we are, we are not beings of free will. We're not beings driven by values. We're driven, beings driven by urges, and that, hey, those are just uh, rewarding. I mean, I talked about this when I talked about movies. Think about all the movies that have a good guy and a bad guy. And the good guy is always, I think about the film Noir, and think of, always like sad and has a pathetic social life and, and can't get the girl. And if he gets the goal, he's going to lose it because he's committed to his, uh, you know, his superpowers and he has to go th do those. Or like, you know, like Spider-Man is never going to get the goal, right? Because the bad guy is always threatening the goal and he doesn't want to put her in danger. So he's never going to get the goal because he's committed to fighting bad guys. It's like you can't be good and happy. Uh, my favorite movie to illustrate that is a, is a movie that Michael Mann made um, called Heat which had Robert De Niro and Al Pacino in it. And, and Robert De Niro plays the bad guy and Al Pacino plays the good guy. Al Pacino's a cop. And the cop is divorced and he doesn't get along with his kids and he lives alone in a dark apartment with, and he drinks and he has pathetic life. And, and Robert De Niro, the bad guy, uh, he has the 25-year-old babe next to him. He has a beautiful house. He has money. He has all this. So virtue and happiness don't go together. And... Where does that come from? Well, it comes from Kant, who says it explicitly. It comes from Christianity. It, it's deep in our culture. So happiness is associated with these material things. And you have to be a bit of a bad boy in order to gain them. Leave your family, right? Jack says, from, she believes that from an altruist perspective, the hot 25 year old woman is considered the ultimate in selfish depravity. Yes. So the other thing is that the altruists, not consciously, but the altruists have, 
they have to position egoism as a caricature. Otherwise, why be an altruist? Right? If the egoist is actually happier, if the egoist actually lives a better life, if the egoist actually has better values, if the egoist is a better family person, if the egoist is a better you know, lover, if the, egoist, if the egoist is happy and everything, and, but, but just a, a valuer, even on some of the values that the altruist holds dear, like family, for example, then why be an altruist? So they have to caricature the egoist. They have to make it about superficial stuff, right? Um, and they accept that that superficial stuff won't make him happy. So it's interesting. If you ask, if you ask Ben Shapiro, and I can't remember if I did during the show, do you think the guy who abandons his family and runs off with the 25-year-old is going to be happier than the guy who stays with his family? I bet you anything that he says no. So they know deep down it doesn't lead to happiness. But they can't, they can't hold, <laughs> right? It's Selfish somebody rationality. They can't hold rationality. They can't hold that somebody can be a thinker, a long-term rational thinker and pursue his own self-interest over the long run. You, you know, what, what Ben Shapiro was saying is, in order to prevent me from going after every 25-year-old at the bar, I need God sitting right above my head, pointing his finger at me and saying, don't do it. That is very revealing. That's very revealing. So, thank um, you. It, it just reminded me of how many times you know you've answered similar questions, and yep. uh, keep doing it. And thank you again. Thanks. No, it's it's. Um, I mean, that image of God standing above you and pointing at you and saying, "Don't do it, or I'm going to come after you," is what convinced me to be an atheist at age six or seven. It, it's, it's literally that memory of thinking God is there. And if I do this, he's going to strike me down and thinking to myself, that's just stupid. And, and, and that was it. That was religion for me. And I was done. Um, and it was while I was going to a very religious school, uh, a Jewish religious day school and wore yarmulke every day and all of this stuff. So, so it's while they were trying to indoctrinate me, they were presenting me with that image that I, I rejected it. Um, but that's what they have. And it's the only thing. It's, it's, they truly believe. They don't want to believe that we can actually have a rational reason why we don't want to go with the 25-year-old, with the 25-year-old by the ball. I think the people who ask that think that this is an easy gotcha and that we're going to say, yep, you got me. I don't know what they think because it's – yeah, it's so silly. It's so silly. Right. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourunbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...